All right, Rocketry fans, let's crank up the hype and dive straight into the fiery finale of SpaceX's Starship Flight 11. That massive explosion you saw lighting up the Indian Ocean on October 13th, 2025? Yeah, it looks straight out of a sci-fi movie. But don't get it twisted, this wasn't a failure. It was a bold, planned, data-grabbing win for SpaceX and the future of space travel. Buckle up, because I'm breaking down exactly why that giant stainless steel rocket went boom, why SpaceX is celebrating, and how this flight just brought us one step closer to Mars. Let's light this candle. Picture this. Starbase, Texas. The sun's dipping low over the gulf, and standing tall on the pad is the 400-foot-tall Starship, Ship 38, the last of SpaceX's version 2 prototypes. Gleaming like a steel skyscraper, it's ready for one of the most extreme tests SpaceX has ever attempted. This wasn't about orbit or a soft landing. Nope, the mission was pure stress testing, pushing the limits of what Starship can survive on a long, high-altitude suborbital flight that would send it thousands of miles across the planet before slamming into the Indian Ocean. Flight 11's mission was all about endurance and heat. SpaceX wanted to know how the upper stage would handle brutal re-entry conditions, the kind you'd face returning from the moon or even Mars. To do that, they didn't play it safe. They turned up the challenge. First, they deliberately removed dozens of the black ceramic heat shield tiles from the ship's belly to expose bare steel, testing how it would react to temperatures hotter than 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, they adjusted the re-entry angle, steeper than usual, forcing Starship to cut through the atmosphere harder and faster than ever before. Finally, they planned a full-speed splashdown instead of a gentle touchdown. That's right, the impact and explosion were part of the plan. And why the Indian Ocean? Simple. It's remote, safe, and perfectly placed for a long downrange trajectory. The flight path from Texas naturally arcs across the Atlantic, over Africa, and ends deep in the Indian Ocean, exactly like a future return path from lunar or Martian missions. SpaceX had recovery ships and drones positioned in advance, ready to track every second, film the re-entry, and recover debris for analysis. Liftoff was picture perfect. The Super Heavy booster roared to life, all 33 Raptor engines igniting with a combined thrust of 16.7 million pounds. That's like 60 jumbo jets taking off at once. Starship soared smoothly into the sky, cleared the tower, and powered through Max-Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic stress. At staging, the booster separated cleanly and began its return toward the Gulf of Mexico, performing a controlled descent before splashing down as planned. Meanwhile, Ship 38 kept climbing, skimming the edge of space and gliding across the planet on a long suborbital arc. Now comes the wild part. Re-entry. About an hour into the flight, Starship began its fiery return. Traveling at nearly 17,000 miles per hour, it hit the upper atmosphere glowing bright orange, surrounded by plasma trails and shock waves. Onboard cameras showed it all, a stainless steel meteor blazing across the sky. Those massive flaps on its sides and tail started moving constantly, steering the ship through its famous belly flop maneuver. Every adjustment generated precious data about stability, drag, and heating. As it descended, sensors recorded temperatures above 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit on the shielded sections, and even higher where the tiles were missing. But here's the kicker. Despite missing tiles, Starship remained structurally sound almost to impact. The data showed that the steel skin underneath held up surprisingly well, a big confidence boost for SpaceX engineers. Now, fast forward to the final moments, roughly 66 minutes after launch. The ship flips upright for a landing burn, three Raptor engines firing to slow it down. But SpaceX throttled back early, on purpose. They wanted to hit hard to study breakup behavior. At around 200 miles per hour laterally and 100 miles per hour downward, Starship slammed into the Indian Ocean. The rear end, containing the engines, struck first, crushing the aft section and rupturing a methane fuel line. Within seconds, the remaining methane and liquid oxygen mixed, ignited, and triggered a massive explosion, a rolling orange fireball over the waves. 
It wasn't a system failure. It was exactly the outcome they planned for. Maximum stress, maximum data. SpaceX's recovery cameras captured every millisecond in ultra-high speed. According to the post-flight analysis, about 80% of the structure remained intact until impact, and only around 5% of tiles detached prematurely, far better than the earlier Flight 8, which lost over 20% mid-descent. That's huge progress. Elon Musk even posted afterward, Ship took a beating and gave us a gold mine of data, closer to Mars than ever. So, why intentionally destroy a rocket worth over a hundred million dollars? Because SpaceX's goal isn't to save this prototype, it's to make future ones indestructible. Every test like this brings them closer to full reusability. By pushing the vehicle past its limits, they learn how to make the next generation stronger. Engineers now know how the structure flexes under extreme heat, how the tile gaps behave, and how fast a partially exposed hull can cool after re-entry. The explosion also tested how components react in salt water. Future missions might require ocean recoveries or emergency splashdowns, and Flight 11 gave them real data on how raptors, tanks, and avionics hold up underwater. And let's not forget, NASA's watching closely. Starship will play a key role in the Artemis program to land astronauts on the moon. These kinds of tests prove Starship can survive even worst-case re-entry conditions. Compared to earlier flights, like Flight 9's tank rupture or Flight 10's unstable flip, Flight 11 was a huge leap forward. It demonstrated full emission control, precision booster recovery, a successful in-space engine relight, and a re-entry that held together far longer than any before. The explosion wasn't a setback, it was the final act of a successful test. Now all eyes are on what comes next. SpaceX has already started stapling hardware for Flight 12, the first version 3 Starship. It'll feature stronger fuel lines, reinforced heat shield mounts, and upgraded Raptors with better thrust-to-weight ratios. Rumor has it they're aiming for a near-orbital flight profile before the end of 2025, and maybe, just maybe, a full orbital attempt in early 2026. Flight 11 proved that SpaceX's fail-fast, learn-faster approach still works. Every boom, every scorch mark, and every splash of molten metal tells a story, a story of progress. This isn't just about building rockets, it's about rewriting how we explore space. So, Rocketry fam, what do you think? Is SpaceX's blow it up to build it better strategy the smartest move in modern rocketry? Drop your thoughts below, I want to hear your take. Smash that like button if you're Team Starship, subscribe for more breakdowns, and keep your eyes on the skies. Because every fiery test, every glowing re-entry, every controlled explosion, it all points to one goal, a reusable, unstoppable Starship fleet capable of taking humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The future's looking hot, bright, and full of stainless steel. Thanks for watching, Rocket fans. Until next liftoff, stay curious, stay inspired, and keep reaching for the stars.